Thank you. Thank you. Uh, 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 Mr. Raskin's recognized. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, it seems to me that most people believe as an abstract proposition that people have a, a privacy right, if not a property right, in their own uh, digital communications, their own digital history. Um, although I don't know we've established that anywhere, and that might be something we really need to talk about. Um, the problem is that when you get to um, a specific criminal investigation or civil investigation and people know that there's a record out there relating to it, I think if you polled people at that point, people would say, well, if there's a record, then the record should be made available. And so I, I guess the, I'm asking, what, what do we do about that basic problem? It seems like technology has a kind of momentum of its own, and once the the facts and the data exist, there is a sense that, well, the government should have access to it. So, Professor Wexler, let me ask you about that. Thank you for the question. Mm -hmm. Evidentiary privileges exist. Uh, the attorney-client privilege, the spousal communications, the priest-penitent privilege, and there are also a slew of statutory evidentiary privileges that Congress has enacted. Those shield existing data from law enforcement and civil litigants. They block warrants, they block subpoenas, they block discovery orders, they protect against wiretapping. If law enforcement accidentally overseizes a privileged communication, they have to use a taint team to purge that content before delivering it to a prosecution team. So privileges are more powerful than torts, than contracts, than fiduciary duties, and they are even more powerful than the Fourth Amendment. Uh, they exist for good reason, and they could exist for abortion-relevant data. Thank you. So, so what is the privacy privilege you're positing there, or you're arguing for? Um, any abortion-relevant data could be covered. Now, this is the, the specifics of this would be something that the committee would have to uh, look into. I'd be happy to help however I can, um, but uh, it's certainly within the power of this committee to identify especially sensitive data and protect it with a statutory evidentiary privilege. Okay, so <clears throat> Professor Wexler seems to be positing um, a specific policy cutout for an evidentiary privilege related to abortion-related travel or speech or um, so on, but we're also talking about the more general problem, right? And Professor Goitin, let me come to yeah. you. The, the legislation I understand we're talking about is to prevent the government from purchasing information from data companies that it cannot otherwise obtain directly. Is that right? That is right, and it would not prevent the government from obtaining that record if it could meet the legal standard that would otherwise apply. So if the government uh, can either get a subpoena or a court order or a warrant under the applicable legal standard, it will have access to that record. And that gets to both your hypothetical about people wanting their data to be private, but also if there's a record in existence wanting the police to have access, if it will help with solving criminal activity. At least access through some kind of legal exactly. mechanism. It, 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 that also gets to Congressman Chabot's question. This mm -hmm. is all about the balance between privacy uh, and, and law enforcement, the legitimate needs of law enforcement. And that balance was established by the framers in the Fourth Amendment. So Americans have privacy rights. Those rights can be overcome if the government can show probable cause to a neutral matter. So th this is essentially the, the meta-technological equivalent of saying that if the government can't enter your home without a search warrant, they can't pay somebody who goes into your home, who breaks into your home, or otherwise gains access through some kind of duplicity, saying that they're a carpenter or a plumber or whatever, right? That's an excellent analogy. Mm -hmm. Um, so, uh, how big a problem is this? In other words, has it become a habit of government to be able to purchase data from companies in order to essentially execute warrants or obtain evidence they would not otherwise be able to get? It, it certainly seems that way. And I, I will say again, I can't stress enough that the government has been completely non-transparent 
about this practice. And so what we know, uh, we know from investigative reporting, from non-governmental uh, organizations that have done their own investigations, from lawmakers who have asked probing questions, and from that we get pieces of a puzzle, and those pieces, I think, leave no doubt that this is a widespread practice now among uh, many uh, federal agencies and state and local agencies as well. Well, I thank you for that, Madam Chair. This sounds like very sensible legislation to me, and I'll yield back to you.